touch briefly on looking at how current there is cognitive development from the skills based models codify the higher levels or the developmental processes of uh, cognitive development. Um, I'll just briefly mention Michael Commons. He's responsible for um, the um, notion of the higher levels of formal operation go from systematic thinking to meta systematic thinking to paradigm or paradigmatic thinking to what he calls cross paradigmatic thinking and so by measuring the problem solving methodologies of people the level of cognitive capacity can be um, codified in these different ways. So the sophistication, it measures the sophistication of reasoning with abstractions. Now, the interesting thing to note um, is that in the skills-based models, they follow Piaget's uh, philosophy pretty um, tightly. And Piaget understood development as um, eliminating contradictions. So if you're working on a problem, if you're working on a problem to seek understanding, then at a certain level of a problem, you have a contradiction between the empirical facts or what you observe, what you see, and your ability to explain it. So you can come up with a logical contradiction, but the contradiction is between your ability to explain in the world. So the contradiction is between the explanation and the observation. So this is a very scientific mindset. They, they do not really talk about, in the skill sets models, they don't really look at the inherent paradoxes or contradictions of the mind itself. It's basically a scientific methodology, um, an empirical kind of approach to cognitive skills um, development. And so that's what you see what Commons is doing, is, is that if you're observing phenomenon, and you have a linear, um, pre-systematic, you have a linear type of uh, understanding, then eventually the problems are going to be more complex and you're going to have a contradiction between your prediction, let's say, and the outcome based upon your um, theory. And so this, this actually follows quite closely to someone like Kuhn. Um, so the contradiction is not inside the mind, but it's between the empirical observations, the experimental setup, the ability to predict. Um, and so from going, when a linear understanding no longer functions, then a systematic approach does better. And then when a systematic understanding no longer is effective, then the developmental trajectory is toward being metasystematic. 
And when a metasystematic or so a metasystematic looks at systems. So for a metasystematic, the object of inquiry is the system itself. Once the metasystematic level no longer produces effects, then there needs to be a paradigm change so that the, the, the foundational assumptions that have been there all along tend to get changed in a paradigm uh, shift. Then there are systems of paradigms, ways to look at problems and systems of paradigms, which are cross-paradigmatic types of reasoning. So Michael Commons is um, model, and there's very, ver very many different versions of it, are based upon looking at problem solving cognitive capacity within this um, framework. There's not a lot of dialectical um, um, indication or exploration in um, his system and not in the skills-based um, developmental um, camp at all in general. One of the most interesting um, models of development in the skills camp is that of Harvard um, philosopher, um, psychologist Kurt Fisher. And he has a skills or task uh, based developmental theory. that looks at development and the progress of development in, in a very interesting way. And it's been very successful in many ways. And so he, he categorizes levels of engagement as um, primary levels of skills and tasks, task development as actions. The next level is uh, representations. The next level would be what he calls abstractions. And the next level up he calls principles. Now the interesting thing is that the movement between each one of these levels. Fisher has identified as being a pattern. So there's a similar pattern. And it's this pattern that he is very interested in identifying and studying. And so the pattern goes from what he calls single things to mappings, to systems. So what he's saying is that, unlike commons, is that there's systems type movements or developments in the lower ranges of cognitive capacity. It's just that um, we don't, they're, they're so simple, the systems are so simple that we haven't looked at them as simple. Uh, systems and so, for example, a um, <clears throat> toddler act actually um, goes from um, performing uh, single actions to mapping those actions, mapping of actions cognitively in several different ways. So you have a couple different mapping relationships. And then he takes those mapping of actions and organizes them into a simple system. So there's some kind of organization of the actions, the, the mapping of those actions cognitively and into a simple system. And at a certain point, this system itself becomes so manipulable or in, in a way for the, for the person 
that the sim this this system this system of maps of actions can become its own single thing it becomes a single representation and then the still a young person here tends to have a collection of single representations that get mapped as mapped representations and as a, at the point they get enough collections of mapped representations at a certain stage the individual creates a system of these mapped representations and then after a certain period of time in cognitive growth capacity which um, is, is um, pushed or pulled by um, the need to develop skills through um, various tasks or problems that the individual confronts, then eventually the um, person is able to look at these systems or representations as single things. And in this case, they become single abstractions. And then the single abstractions, not surprisingly, get mapped abstractions and you get a collection of these mapped abstractions that the individual can utilize for problem solving but eventually all these this collection of mapped abstractions right, become themselves a system and so the individual systematizes the collection of mapped abstractions and the abstractions were mapped from abstractions that were once systems or representations and the systems or representations were mapped from single representations that were once only available to the individual as systems of, of actions and so you have this movement back and th up levels through this process of taking what's available initially only as a single item mapping it cognitively at which point it's been, it, it eventually becomes able to be integrated or organized into a system and eventually that system of organization can be handled again as a single thing in the next higher level and the last move in Fisher's schemata is that these mapped, these systems of mapped abstractions then become principles and they become single principles and um, the assumption is that then that can go on from there so um, this is very interesting and um, what's one of the things that um, interested me about this system and um, one of Kurt Fisher's students is Zach Stein and I asked him if in their studies did anyone ever <clears throat> experience a principle so when they're doing studies and they find out that they've elicited this uh, movement toward principles does anyone ever experience principles not as being up this sequence but somehow being foundational <clears throat> to the actions in the first place right so did anyone ever find a principle that they felt was actually there all along experience that principle as foundational even to the actions so along this whole sequence was there ever this undertow right this question of an undertow and um, Zach Stein said that to his knowledge that had never been articulated and for me that would be key that would be key if a person experienced this progression up to a principle as actually seeing that the principle might be foundational to the process so ontologically prior 
Now this does not exist in Kurt Fisher's uh, system, but because we're not really going to come back to Kurt Fisher's system, just wanted to to share with you that if 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 this would be for me the move that would signal um, a post post formal or beyond a a uh, formal operational uh, understanding. And so this, the flavor of this we'll see in some has been developed in some of the other developmental models based more on meaning. Um, and it has to do with the fact that the inquiry turns inward toward the assumptions or the, toward the processes in the mind itself. But this does not happen or is not part of what's measured in the skills task development um, models. Okay, now 